Okay. What is the one word that scares quantum mechanics, quantum physics, more than any other word? And all you have to do is talk to one of these uh, intellectual pedophiles uh, that is sucking at the tits of uh, the uh, fecal matter left over by Einstein and Richard Feynman. And all you have to do is ask them like an innocent child to give you a denotative quantification, say quantification, of the term field. Ask them to denote what the term field means it is an impossibility. Hold on a second. Boy. A field has no quantity. Therefore, we ask what gives denotation or definition to the quantification of the term field. If everything, German chick letting her red dog take a poop on the lamppost, <laughs> what gives denotation and definition to the term field? If everything is field, and it is, and fields are not particles, they have no quantity, i.e. quantum, what is the one scary 800-pound gorilla that sits and shits upon the heads of quantum physicists and those that uh, suck at the tits and the fecal matter left over by Einstein and uh, Dick Feynman, one of the greatest fools of modernity. The guy had a thousand charisma points and zero IQ points. He was a complete and total fool. Why, how does Richard Feynman explain magnetism? Virtual particles. What are virtual particles? They're an abstract creation. They're a phantasm created to explain both instantaneous action at a distance and field acceleration or motion. Force and motion or inertia and acceleration, depending on whether it's quote unquote magnetic attraction or magnetic repulsion. And of course, there is no such thing as magnetic attraction or magnetic repulsion. The most intelligent thing ever said was said ages ago. Uh, by uh, Faraday who called magnetism the dielectric field. Magnetism is literally the force in motion, loss of inertia as necessitated by uh, dielectricity that occurs at a, at a rate of 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3. But that's a point for another discussion. So, how do you scare a quantum physicist or someone who is an Einsteinian uh, mental midget? Just ask them like a child to give denotation and definition to the quantification of the term field and they will freeze. They're brain dead. We live in a modern society with advanced digital cameras and all sorts of neat little devices but we're still knuckle-dragging apes. We're still unintelligent simians with our HD TVs and our digital SLR cameras that think we're really smart because we have a lot of this neat crap gear but we don't really understand fundamentally at the atomic level how it works as regards fields because fields have no quantity and they are particle free whether that be gravity, magnetism, dielectricity or electricity. Of course electricity is five times psi and cube Planck of electrification. Electricity is a hybrid of dielectricity or electrostatics and magnetism and gravity is nothing other than dielectric acceleration so electricity and gravity ultimately don't exist. What we've done is we've given, uh, we've given uh, conceptual reification uh, to hybrid uh, field modalities of uh, dielectricity and electricity, but that's a point for another discussion. So you need to think about a perturbation of what by what. Okay, We cannot give reification to space, nor can we give posterior attribute reification, which would be a logical fallacy, to a shadow. We can say that someone is cold in a shadow, or a shadow keeps the plant from growing, or causes the plant to die, but we cannot say, like a shadow, likewise the space, that there are fields in space. Space is obviously never a terminal for fields. No field, whether it be electrical, magnetic, or electrostatic, is ever terminated in space. That's an impossibility. Space is not a terminus for fields. It doesn't matter what sort of field that it is. And there is only one field. There's only dielectricity, the loss of dielectricity, the hybrid of those two, and the acceleration towards electrostatic counter space, i.e. gravity. Because at the center of gravity, if they're able to go to the center of the Earth, there would be no gravity. If I were to encapsulate myself in 
an impervious bubble and go to the center of the Earth, there would be no gravity. So how do you explain that? At the center of that which is strongest, there is not that, i.e. gravity. How do you explain that? Ask a quantum physicist or ask an Einsteinian stooge to answer that question. They'll stutter or pee on themselves. Ask them to give quantification to a field. It is a logical impossibility because fields have no quantity. But fields are everything. The entire universe is fields and field perturbations. Well, what is mass? What is matter? Well, it's a dielectric condensate. Well, what is a dielectric condensate? Well, that's a somewhat convoluted answer, and I'll leave it for another video. It's really rather simple, however. So, you need to ask yourself a perturbation of what by what, and therefore you're asking what is a field? What gives definition to a field? All fields, electrical, magnetic, and gravity, don't exist. They're marked either by force or inertia interactions and accelerations. All our fields and fields are not particles. They have no quantity. Motion and acceleration define all fields and are correlational observations of change over time. Time is nothing other than a posterior attribute relational to masses and bodies in space. But space is not a terminal. Space is not something that acts on something, contrary to the belief of the Einsteinians. Space is not something which does things and acts on things. It is the same, the same case that we have a posterior attribute reification fallacy that we can say a shadow is something that makes someone cold or causes a plant to die, but it is not the case. A shadow is a privation of light. Same is the case with space. We can say space on acts on things attributionally, relationally, but we cannot say that a privation is a subject in and of itself which can act on other things. And if you don't understand that point, and it's really very, very simple, if you don't understand that point, you're never going to understand anything about field theory. It's called posterior attribute reification. It's a logical fallacy. Same way we reify ignorance. Well, ignorance causes a child to put his hand on the stove. Ignorance is a privation, agnosis. The lack of wisdom, the lack of epistemi, the lack of empirical knowledge, but specifically referring to ignorance, which is not specifically connected to uh, empirical uh, ignorance. Um, a shadow, ignorance, space, a privation. We cannot reify a privation as something that does something. If someone imagines that a snake is laying on the ground and it's really a, a, a stick, and the old man has a weak ticker, and he thinks it's a snake and he has a heart attack when he trips over the, uh, the stick, can we say that the stick gave him a heart attack because he thought it was a snake? something that didn't exist at all, a privation caused something to occur, same exact thing. Posterior attribute reification of something that is a privation and that does not exist. Okay? Think about that.